In this video, I am uh, giving you a brief introduction to the concept of uh, friction. And uh, after we have understood these very basic concepts of friction, we will be able to understand some complex aspects of friction like uh, coefficient of friction and what happens when we have an object moving on different types of uh, planes. Let's take a very simple example. Let's say we have a surface on which we have a spherical object, let's say a ball, and this ball has a certain mass. Let's say we apply a small force F onto this. Our observation is this ball will move along this path and after covering some distance, it will stop over here. What is happening is the moment we apply a force onto this ball, the ball starts moving. But at that very moment, an opposing force comes into play. That opposing force is between the ball and the ground. So the opposing force acts in this direction. So as the ball keeps on rolling, this opposing force keeps on reducing the velocity of the object. It deaccelerates this ball and finally it stops. So this opposing force which comes into play between the ball and this surface is, as you know, the frictional force. If you want to look at the definition of frictional force, it is basically an opposing force which comes into play whenever there is a relative motion between two surfaces or two objects. In this case, the two objects are the ball and the ground surface. So there is a relative motion between them. And whenever there is a relative motion, the friction force comes into play. So this is how friction force acts between two objects. Let's take another example. Let's say we have a, a block of some mass placed on a rough surface. So I'm showing this rough surface over here. And this block is placed over here. And this block has some mass, let's say 12 kilogram. Now, our observation is that when I apply a small force onto this, when I say small force, I mean, let, let's take some example, let's say 1 Newton. So I applied a force of 1 on Newton onto this block. Let's say the block doesn't move at all. And that's our common observation that when an object is placed on a surface, when you are applying a small force, the block doesn't move. Question is why it doesn't move? We are applying a force, but still the block doesn't move. That implies that the moment you apply this force of 1 Newton onto this block, an opposing force, the frictional force, I will denote it by small or uh, low case f. So this f comes into play. So let me, let me write over here that applied force and let me write over here applied force. And frictional force. So, when I applied a force of 1 Newton, the block did not move. That means an opposing force, frictional force came, came into play. It prevented the block from moving. And since the block does not move, since it remains in equilibrium, this frictional force is equal to this force applied. So, the frictional force also at that time is 1 Newton. Let's say I increase this applied force to say 1.1 Newton. Again, we observe that you have applied 1.1 Newton force. The block doesn't move. The block remains stationary. And that would automatically imply that the frictional force now has increased to 1.1 Newton. Because if it would have remained 1 Newton, the net force on acting on this object in this direction would be 0.1 Newton. 1.1 minus 1 Newton. And that would cause this object to move or accelerate. Since it does not accelerate, it automatically implies that the frictional force also has increased. And this will continue. Let's say 1.2 Newton. Frictional force also will increase to 1.2 Newton and it will prevent this block from moving. This will continue till we reach some value of force. Let us say, and that force could uh, be anything. It could be, let's say, 5 Newton. Let me, let me just 5 Newton. 
when this applied force reaches 5 newton what may happen is this block may be on the verge of moving it starts moving a little bit and at that point in time when it is just on the verge of moving the frictional force is 5 newton again because the block is on the verge of moving it's not moving forward so when it reaches a particular value in this case i am taking an example of 5 newton it could be some other value the frictional force also becomes 5 newton and what we observe is that moment this force increases beyond 5 newton let us say 5.1 newton and in fact it could be 5.0001 newton but let us say it becomes 5.1 newton we observe that the block starts moving in this direction it starts accelerating in this particular direction because now the applied force 5.1 newton is greater than the frictional force the frictional force is 5 newton since this force is slightly larger we see the block moving and if the force becomes 5.2 newton this remains 5 newton what will happen is since the net force is 0.2 newton it will accelerate more because there is more net force acting in the right direction in fact what we observe is the moment this object starts moving starts accelerating in this particular direction the frictional force decreases slightly so what we observe is this five when this moment start moving 5.1 5 newton at 5.2 newton this might become 4. Point, let us say 9 newton because the, this block has started moving and the frictional force between this block and this surface decreases a little bit because of the motion of the block and we will have 5.3 newton and this will be 4.9 newton more acceleration if it becomes 6 newton this will remain 4.9 newton the acceleration of this block will further increase so this is how the frictional force changes with that light force and therefore if we let's say we plot a graph let us say i plot a graph of these two forces and then let us say i take the applied force on the x axis and the frictional force i'm denoting it by small f the frictional force on the y-axis the graph that we get will some something like this so we get a straight line going up decrease a little bit and goes straight like this this will be nearly straight so so this will uh, we'll take this line as a straight line so this is how the graph will look like what it means is that as the applied force increases the frictional force increases in this particular part let us call this o a b and let us see so in the part o a as the applied force increases frictional force increases so we are talking of this particular part this one as you can see over here as applied force increases the frictional force kept on increasing straight line then the frictional force as you can see over here or here reaches its maximum value 5 newton this is the maximum value this is 5 newton maximum value at 5 newton or 5.1 newton and then if you further increase the applied force when we kept on increasing the applied force in this particular part what we observed is that the frictional force decreases to a little bit and then remains constant so this particular part this part is part bc when it reaches the maximum value of 5 newton this is point a and this part is part o a part o a where as we keep on increasing the applied force the frictional force keeps on increasing that frictional force is known as static frictional force and we denote it by the symbol f suffix s static frictional force as far as this point is concerned phi newton this is the maximum value of the static frictional force so phi newton is static frictional force but its maximum value and we call that maximum value as that is the friction force the friction at point a we call this the limiting 
frictional force. Then friction force decreases and we have a straight line which is this part. In this part, part BC, the object is moving and therefore the frictional force is known as kinetic frictional force. Kinetic frictional force which we denote by F. So this is how the frictional force keeps on changing as we keep on applying, uh, we keep on changing the applied force. Last point, in this particular part OA, we saw that as the applied force increased, the frictional force increased. Therefore, frictional force is known as a self-adjusting force. Is It adjusts itself, it changes itself as the applied force increases in the static frictional part. Later on, of course, it becomes constant, but in the static frictional part, friction is known as a self-adjusting force. Right. With this, I have given you a brief introduction to friction and in the next video, we will go into some deeper concepts associated with friction. Thank you.